pleased that we're able to find a way to win, you know, manufacture a W. Uh, and uh, you know what I told the kids was sometimes you just need to find a way uh, to get a W so you can feel good about yourself and, and get the pep back in the step. And uh, when you had a stre when you have a stretch where you feel snake bitten or down on your luck, uh, it's good to get a W and, and have some momentum uh, to move down the line with. And uh, it was a, you know, another Big East battle. Uh, we lost one at DePaul and we won one here at home. And if you look through the league, uh, most of the scores, you know, there's the exception with Georgetown uh, pummeling Villanova. But, but for the most part, the, you know, all the games are coming down to the wire, and I think this is kind of par for the course or continues the trend uh, in the Big East this year. Very little uh, separation between first and last place in this conference in, in terms of each game. Uh, the, the scores, you know, uh, you know, continue to be uh, to be very close. So proud of our guys. I thought Don Pointer was lights out. Jamal Branch uh, gave us. Good contributions down the stretch. Rashid and Phil were solid. Uh, really, you know, everyone played well. D'Angelo uh, clearly struggled, but uh, to be able to win when um, when D'Angelo Harris goes three for eighteen is is uh, you know is is a good thing. That you know our best shooter and All American candidate, and a Player of the Year, potential Player of the Year, has an off night, but others step up and are able to offset that poor shooting and still find a way to get a victory. So uh, we're pleased, lots of facets of play that we have to improve upon. There were a lot of breakdowns and areas that we weren't pleased with, but uh, clearly getting the W was a step in the right direction for this group. Steve, how much do you feel that, uh, that D'Angelo's injury affected him tonight, contributed? Yeah, you know, I think his, his um, he, you know, he's, he doesn't have the lift, um, and you know, so I think it's, it's clearly affecting him. If you look at his career, he's, Rarely had back, you know to have back-to-back -back games where he was two for two for ten and then three for for eighteen. So, but he hit the big ones and the free throws to help salt the victory away. So, you know, uh, true to form, uh, D'Angelo is at his best when the game is on the line, um, and then that that says a lot about his growth. That you know he still has the courage and wants the ball even in the night where he's struggling as he has or as he did uh, against Marquette. Steve, should he want the ball? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he's, even when he's like one for twelve in the first half. Well, I mean, we saw the results. I mean, he, you know, he. That's. Uh, it's like telling Reggie Jackson to, you know, choke up and try and lay down a bunt. I mean, you know, you got. Um, when you have a player that has a gift, you know, you, uh, you know, you're going to continue to. And I thought our players did a good job of that showing confidence in him and coming back to him uh, in crunch time. And for him not to flinch and to step up and, and bang down those threes in the second half, and then to, to salt it away with the free throws, uh, was, you know, says a lot about him. But but yeah, we're you know our our mindset is to you know continue to do uh, you know to continue to attack and you know and, and uh, try and get stops and, and find a way to get a win. So, um, but I thought our play when he was one for twelve and he was struggling, you know, I thought the team. Uh, Stayed with him and continued to encourage him. You know, I thought that was some growth, just as a group or a unit for us tonight. Steve, not to suggest that it's you know Willis Reed esque, but do you think that it was elevating to the rest of your club that Harrison makes that three pointer for the lead mm -hmm. with about five minutes left? Do you think that that do you think that that had any ripple effect? Yep, I think you know the first one he made in the in the huddle, um, the team was. You know, having some fun with it, kind of ribbing him a little bit because he was in the desert. He's been in a drought in the DePaul game, and for most of this game until late, he uh, he began to have some success. So, um, yeah, you know, our, our team feeds off Dom. You know, but but it's, it's just a tight knit group. You know, so it's hard to separate or distinguish. You know, but I, but I think that was a big shot for us. Uh, and the free throws obviously were critical as well. Without looking ahead to Sunday a little if you can. I mean, obviously there's gonna be a lot of hype about Coach K and Jaleel coming here. You know, 
obviously you guys are trying to stop Coach Kent from getting his sure. thousand win. Sure. Can you talk about that and how much can Chris help himself if he can contain Oklahoma? You know, I think uh, with, you know, it's obviously the, the Duke game presents a, uh, a big opportunity um, for us on our home court um, against a, uh, you know, a very talented team. And, uh, so, you know, we've got a couple days to prepare here and, and, and get ready. But, uh, you know, to beat Duke, it's, it's going to be a collective effort uh, with, with Chris, you know, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll be sure to, we're going to have to help, you know, collectively uh, to be able to uh, compete with Duke. What are some what are of the thoughts on trying to stop Coach K's historic win? Well, you know, uh, no one has more respect uh, than me for uh, Mike Krzyzewski and the career he's had. Um, he's been a great mentor, advisor, and friend throughout my career began communicating with him through letters when I was a junior in college at Chapman University. And um, he was one of the first coaches to actually, you know, correspond and, and to give direction and advisement to someone that was aspiring uh, to someday be a Division One basketball coach. Uh, and then I was able to spend time, visit uh, their program. And, and throughout the past uh, 28 years, you know, he's been someone that's You know, he, he's someone that's at, at, at the critical career junctures when I've turned to him. He's always given great advice um, and great support. And during the stretch uh, where I missed that season with cancer, uh, he was one of the first people to call and really share with me his thoughts on, um, you know, a, a different but some similar similarities to the situation he went through at Duke and, and gave me some great helpful advice. Um, and help and navigate through that season, my second season here. So, um, so I have great respect, great admiration. He's, you know, uh, kind of the gold standard. Probably Billy Case and John Wooden, Mike Shashevsky. Those are the two in the history of the sport, uh, if not the best. You know, in, in the handful of the best that ever coached the game. Um, but you know, come Sunday, St. John's wants to win. We want to beat Duke, um, and we want to. You know, it's it's. it's uh, Less about you know Coach Shashevsky. It's more about we need to you know beat their basketball team, and uh, you know it's our home court, and uh, we need a W, and uh, that's that's the approach we're taking um, in terms of getting ready for this ball game. Uh, one more question right here. Uh, just back to Chris for a moment, Coach. Uh, how vital was he on the interior tonight defensively? You know, uh, it's always so funny. Right after a game, it's so difficult. You know, when I go home at night and, I, and then I watch the game film, I get a much better sense because you're seeing it. Um, you can really lock in and focus. But uh, Chris, I'm just looking now at the numbers. You know, I, I, you know, the five blocks, two steals, ten rebounds. Um, you know, so it was a it was an impressive performance uh, by Chris Obekba and Don Pointer. You know, maybe his best game of his career here. I know he came close to a triple or quadruple double at Rutgers. He may have had a triple double another time, and, and he's. It's, but this might have been his his best game yet in terms of a complete both ends of the court sustained effort. Uh, he only had one foul in the first half, which I thought was critical. Um, he, he, you know, Carlino didn't score on him. He completely shut his water off once we made that switch. And he made you know some big time dunks, um, got inside of that zone, and was a factor. Uh, but you know, you look at that Don Pointer line; it's 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 uh, pretty amazing. You know, he's a he is a really special basketball player. And so when we get Dom and Chris Obeck put together playing well on the front line, uh, good things happen for for St. John's. And, and most of the games Dom fouls out, we've lost. So I want to say four of the five losses Dom fouled out. Maybe I'm. Maybe I'm wrong on that. Or he's in early foul trouble, which affects the game. You know, Gonzaga ran away from us, and Dom was out, then Dom went back in, and then we came back, cut it to three, and, and then uh, he might have fouled out at the end of that game too. So, um, so, so I thought Dom and Chris in the front line together were fantastic. And our guard play overall was impressive, other than D'Angelo's struggles. But then he stepped up late, and that's what a team does is you know, try and hold it together and, and collectively or in a collaborative way, you know, manufacture.
manufacture wind, which is what we're able to do tonight. Steve, uh, can you just give us an idea about Harrison's cap and whether I, you yeah, it's this tough. is going to be a lingering thing? Or I don't know. Good word, though, lingering. Um, I think, it, you know, he he said he felt okay, you know, and and uh, you know, our, I I kind of lean on our trainers and doctors. And uh, they gave the green light, and then I always check in with the player himself because that feedback is obviously valuable. Uh, but you have to balance that by the, the experts, the, the trainer and the doctor, because sometimes a player will say, I'm fine, I want to go, and he may not. He's speaking more from emotion as opposed to what's really the best thing. Um, and, and um, you know, I thought he rushed his shot some. Um, when I, you know, cause I, I was trying to find something in the mechanics or the delivery that I can help him with. Uh, we took him out of the game, which might have been the most important thing, I think, just to, you know, sometimes sitting down and looking at the game through a different lens or prism than actually going up and down the floor and participating could be helpful. It's almost the equivalent of a deep breath, but we, we forced that deep breath for a player by putting him on the bench, and, and he seemed to be better once he went back in. And also, Jamal Branch gave us a lift while I was in there, you know. So, uh, but but we'll find out more tomorrow from trainer, doctor, and D'Angelo's feedback, and then we'll we'll go from there. Thanks, coach. Okay. Cool.